building an Arduino pen plotter with wooden linear rails. Let's get on with the craze. In the last episode, we more or less finished the gantry, so in this video, we're gonna build and mount the X carriage as well as the print bed to find out whether linear rails made from wood are in fact a good idea. The first thing I want to do is remount the holes in the rollers, since right now being the 2mm inner diameter I drill them to, these are a nice friction fit on the 2mm nails I'm going to use as a shaft, so we need to make these holes very slightly bigger, and the easiest way to do that is by just putting one of the new untreated nails in the drill and just re-drilling the holes very slowly. The reason why this works, if you ever looked at a nail from very close up, is due to the way nails are manufactured, the tips are very slightly squished in one direction, making them marginally wider in the other. So if you use a new, untreated nail in the drill, it'll perfectly remount the hole, making it ever so slightly bigger, just enough for the nail to slide and rotate in it freely. Once I'm done with that, I'll grind off head and tip of the nail so I can polish them up on the drill press using regular household scouring cream. So far so good, since I can guarantee you that my linear rails are not parallel to the Micron, nor would I ever expect them to stay that way considering the whole thing is made out of wood, the design has to make up for small inaccuracies as well as expansion and contraction of the wood. If it doesn't, I'll get the same issue I had on the old pen plotter, where the carriage will be snug on one side of the axis, but wiggle around loosely on the other. And we don't need these inaccuracies on our CNC, otherwise it'll just be another one of these dysfunctional products people use to show off with online. To avoid that, I have these plywood blocks with a cut on one side, to which the rollers get mounted, and these in turn then screw to the print bed, effectively spring-loading the rollers so they always push down on the rails to make up for these unavoidable inaccuracies. It's quite a sophisticated mechanism, that's the main reason why I need this pen plotter to test it before applying it in large scale on my 3D printer. That way, if it doesn't work great on the plotter, I can still tweak it a little bit before wasting lots of material on the printer. Anyway, before attaching the polished nails to the springy blocks, I need to drill a couple of elongated holes to allow for adjustment via the mounting screws. Then I can finally super glue the nails in. To reduce friction between the rollers and the springs, we're gonna make some tiny tiny washers out of this vacuum formed piece of PET packaging. Drilling clean holes into this stuff is relatively easy, but requires the sheet to be clamped between two layers of scrap wood. Then I can do the outside using a very very crappy and especially dull hole punch. These tiny washers now go in all four mounting blocks. To reduce friction further, I need to grease the inside of the roller as best I can, as well as the shaft before sliding on the roller. To prevent the rollers from falling off again, I'm going to cut short pieces off this tiny plastic tube, which just so happens to stretch over the shaft in a nice friction fit. These pieces of tiny plastic tube, incidentally, are the stems of cotton swabs from back years ago when plastic stem cotton swabs were still a thing. Now don't you dare judge my habit of cutting off the used tips on cotton swabs just so I could keep the little plastic stem, because things like that can come in very handy one day, as I just proved. To install these springy blocks on the print bait, I unscrew the y-axis again, cause it would be kinda inconvenient having to move the whole thing around, as you'll see in a moment, so let's put the print bait on a little spacer so I can clamp on these springy blocks. Make sure they are all the right way around. And now I'm going to insert y-axis upside down into the rollers, like so, and this is the point where I realize, yeah, my math from the CAD model didn't quite add up and things are sticking out where they're not supposed to. I should have made the y-axis a little bit less wide, because now these springy blocks are sticking out, but I didn't. Oh well. But it seems like this is rolling very nicely already. So make sure these are all centered and stick out the same distance on all sides. 
now use this pen with a ridiculously long tip to mark where the screws are gonna go. Darn, I broke it. Take this out again. For the screws, I have to resort to these countersunk ones, which are definitely not the right kind of screws to use in this instance. I would much rather prefer some kind of pan has screw, something like this would be ideal, or even any other kind of non countersunk screw would be better. However, unfortunately, my screw collection doesn't contain any in the right size or even the right number, so I have to go with these and a bunch of washers instead. I'm not gonna tighten them down totally so they can move a little bit and afterwards when I put in the y-axis I'm gonna tighten them down with these still adjustable on all four sides I can now put the y-axis in again then slightly push them against the y-axis in order for the little cutout to fulfill its purpose. Oh, I'm just realizing I can't put on these washers because they interfere with the rollers. Darn! Need to take them out again. That's very bad because now the screw is going to go into the wood, which is not exactly what I need. Make them squeeze the y-axis a little bit, then tighten it down. This is rolling very nicely, maybe I squeezed it a little bit too hard. It doesn't really need to be tight, it just needs to be tight enough so there's no backlash. And we have a wonderful linear rail. This is amazing! This is so smooth! It's much smoother than I expected. Look at this! It's a real linear rail. <laughs> A zero dollar linear rail. Now I can assemble this again. Get rid of these washers. And it's done. And we have another problem. Oh my goodness. That is so dumb. So apparently the nails are a little bit too long and hit the chassis, which means I could either shorten the nail or I could just cut a little notch into the chassis, which is what I'm gonna do because wood is softer than iron and if I shorten these nails a little too much, my little q-tip sleeves might not stay on. So I'm gonna cut a notch into the wood here. Incidentally, you can also see the springy blocks sticking out like they weren't supposed to according to the design, but in real life they do, which is annoying. Anyway, let's cut these notches. I simultaneously love and hate this kind of modification. Love because it reminds me of the good old days where building stuff still wasn't more than hacking a few things together, and hate because it makes the end result look so much more unprofessional and DIY. So with that out of the way, the print bait slides all the way back and forth very nicely. I also ended up removing all the remaining of these washers, because it doesn't make any sense having washers back here if these other screws are the ones taking the majority of the load. So I removed them. Next up, I need to build the X carriage, and I'm going to do that as a nice build montage, because the design is pretty much the exact same as for the Y carriage, except it's all vertical. If you don't like watching build montages, just skip ahead to where it's done. People do that all the time, I don't understand why, but cue the montage!
no way, this is mind blowing. This turned out so much better than I expected. Just listen to how smooth it runs. That shouldn't be possible using wood. And in terms of precision, this seems easily precise enough for a 3D printer. This is so weird to see from such a primitive material as wood. Let me try putting the microphone closer so you can hear it better, and then I'll shut up for a moment. How long do you think this will hold up and stay that nice? Tell me in the comments. So let's take a look at what I did differently on the X carriage. First of all, I used the right kind of screws. These are indeed pan hat screws, like the ones I should have used on the Y carriage, but didn't because I didn't have one. Well, for the X carriage, I did have the right size handy. So I used them. Related to these screws, I unfortunately drilled the pilot holes for these screws all the way through. I wouldn't have needed to because these screws are just one millimeter short of piercing the surface and I didn't want to drill the holes all the way through but when I went to drill them I forgot that and drilled them all the way through. Not a big deal, it's just a visual thing but it's one of these tiny mistakes that annoy me very much once I do them. So next up the X carriage is quite a bit stiffer to move around than the Y carriage because this wooden spring is a little bit stiffer than the springs on the Y carriage because it's two millimeters wider, first of all. And then also, it doesn't go around a corner like these do. These go around a corner in kind of a U-bend. This one is just one flat bar which needs to be bent if you want to have springiness. That's actually not a big deal because these rollers are stiffer to rotate than the rollers on the Y-axis because, as you can see, these actually have a little bit of wiggle room to slide back and forth on the shaft. If I move the print bed, it slides up and down by about half a millimeter. I cannot have that on the X carriage because if these slide back and forth on the shaft, the entire thing is going to tilt back and forth and once you have a pen on there, it's going to translate into inaccuracies in the y-axis. So these rollers are actually very slightly squeezed sideways so they don't slide back and forth on the shaft. That's also why I put a second tiny plastic washer on there to prevent them from rubbing against the q-tip sleeves. Then I also had to cut some more notches into the structure to clear these nails. I really should have thought about that earlier, but I didn't. So there you have it! Are linear rails made from wood a good idea? Well, certainly my expectations have been exceeded by a far amount. But then again, I don't know what exactly I expected. Maybe I didn't expect anything. That may be the reason why. But in any case, I think only time will tell whether these wooden rails are indeed going to stay straight or maybe they'll bend as soon as humidity changes. Only time will tell. And also, will this be wear resistant? I figure it might wear out a little quicker than metal linear rails. But in any case, I think this should be good enough for a pen plotter in any case. And also, presumably a laser engraver and even a laser cutter. And if you really want to stretch it, it should also work on a 3D printer. Although I wouldn't really try it on a 3D printer because there's just no point. A 3D printer is going to see much more use than a pen plotter in any case. So it'll certainly wear out a lot faster. Only time will tell if this is going to stay as nice and smooth as it is now. I guess I could do a wear test once it's done, leave it running 24-7 till it breaks down. Although, I don't really want to destroy it just after building it. I kind of want to use it as a pen plotter or even an engraver, even though I don't really have much use for these things. But if you guys want to see it, if you really want to see it, I'm going to do it. Leave it running 24-7 and we'll see what breaks down first.
Other than that, I almost regret going with the 28 BYJ for the 8 stepper motors because with different, better stepper motors, this thing could potentially have a lot more potential. I think it could be preciser, the linear rails certainly allow for more precision, but since they are slightly stiff to move, I don't think it'll be preciser than 0.1 millimeters at best with the 28 BYJ48. If I use different stepper motors, it could be a lot better. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did so, don't hesitate to leave a like. And sorry for the big jump from perfectly scripted to very long and rambly unscripted. I kind of wanted to try to see what I can do without script, since I am not particularly good at speaking to a camera unscripted. However, I don't really like scripted content. It's just a little bit too good to be true. So I'm experimenting with stuff and I'll see you very soon, hopefully. Bye!